Okay, welcome back. Um, this video is going to be about the Son of God movie that just came out. Um, this kind of hinges off the last few videos I made regarding the graven images and Catholicism and things like that. For obvious reasons, you'll see. Um, this video mostly is for Christians, born again Christians, okay? And I'm trying to expose some true facts about the producers of this film and what their motives are, what their beliefs are, what their worldview is. And believe me, your worldview influences what you do and the message that you want to send. Making a movie is all about promoting a message, okay? I'm trying to promote a message in my videos. It's out of God's word, okay? Um, they have an agenda to promote. Um, so I just want you to be able to uh, not be fooled or deceived by their new age Christ that they're presenting in this movie. It's not the Jesus Christ of God's word. And we're going to talk about who these people are, what their motives are, and a little bit about the plot, how they distort God's word, how they change what the Bible really says, and present a storyline and events that never happened, events not recorded in Scripture. Then they take the important events that are recorded in Scripture pertaining to the Lord Jesus Christ and His Gospel, and they hack them out. I can't think of anybody that would want to do that. <laughs> Satan. <coughs> Excuse me, Satan. <clears throat> Satan would... Maybe. Okay, Roma Downey. We'll start with her. She's the beautiful Irish actress that was in Touched by an Angel. Um, problem there with that show... Uh, angels are never portrayed as women, as female. And that show was New Age anyway. It wasn't going off God's word. It, it was sprinkled here and there with little key words and phrases, but it was a New Age message being promoted in that show. Humanism. Um, and Della Reese, she's off on another page too. She's some kind of universalist or something. She's got a weird, wacky church that she's uh, part of there. I think she's a uh, reverend or something, you know, title only reserved for God, by the way. Roma Downey is a very immodest woman. She is constantly basically parading her body around. And that is certainly not a Christian example to set. She is educated at the University of Santa Monica uh, with a degree of spiritual psychology. Let's just, off their site, this is what some of the things they teach, they promote, they teach in when you're getting this education in spiritual psychology. Experiencing enhancing spiritual awareness through knowing yourself as a divine being having a human experience. Okay, well, that's new age. You are a divine being. You're just having a human experience. You're divine. You have the, the, the cosmic Christ or the Christ consciousness inside of you, and you blah, 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 you know. That's new age garbage, okay? So, whoosh, you just wipe it right out. She's got that as her education. Let's see what else they taught her there. Manifesting greater success and fulfillment personally and professionally. Oh, manifesting it, you know, making it happen. Like the word faith movement almost. And, you know, just think and grow rich, think and succeed. And, and uh, yeah, and uh, believe in yourself. Oh. Transforming your consciousness and your life by integrating the principles and practices of spiritual psychology. Oh, like a system that you can work. You know, you, you do this and this happens, and you do that and that happens. Almost like witchcraft. <laughs> Imagine that. New Age never has anything to do with that. Oh, but, but you know, it's, it's a, you integrating the principles and you're, you're, you're pushing the buttons, you know, and you're, you're transforming your consciousness and your life. Hmm. 
Maybe you get your best life now. Mastering powerful soul-centered basic skills. Tools for spiritual evolution. There's another satanic keyword of the New Age movement. Spiritual evolution. That's what it's all about. And that's what their little movie is all about. Because it's not the same Jesus Christ. It's a false Christ. You know, the real Jesus warned about false Christ's coming. And he said, be not deceived. So that's why I'm trying to raise a few red flags here. More like pointing out the red flags. You know, they're, they've got the ginormous red flags all over the place. I'm just trying to point them out to the audience. Resolving and healing your own issues. Anything that disturbs your peace. We can't have that. Aligning with your soul's purpose. Not God's will, God's purpose. You know, sometimes God's purpose and God's will for your life is not your own. My life would probably be pretty screwed up right now if I got what I thought I wanted 15 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. I'll tell you that for a fact. Okay. She learned the process of self-counseling to connect with your inner counselor, a source of wisdom, unconditional loving and compassion that resides at the level of the authentic self. Oh, they, they capitalize all these words. Inner counselor, they capitalize wisdom, they capitalize authentic, they capitalize self. Divine humanity, yep. Yeah. When you go on to their page at USM and you go into what is spiritual psychology, you'll see that they are indeed promoting new age ideas. And there's a quote from the page. Spiritual psychology is the study and practice of the art and science of human evolution in consciousness. Hmm. They're certainly not hiding the fact that they teach a new age worldview. They're not hiding it. And she's proud to say that she has this degree. It goes on to say... Put another way, spiritual psychology is a technology that empowers students to convert their everyday life experiences into rungs on the ladder of spiritual evolution. Hmm. That's evil. I get my own selections on the radio in the car. Books on tape by Eckhart Tolle, Tony Robbins. She goes on to say, my husband says I'm so self-realized, I'm practically levitating. She's funny. <laughs> levitating, you know, that's another one of those witchcraft things. Oh, she's Catholic, by the way. Just saying. She's a mystical Catholic. This is what the ecumenical movement is doing. They, they send Catholics into this New Age field to get all this in and, and the charismatic field and the Pentecostal field and they get all this training and then they come back and they promote within the Catholic circles and they're trying to uh, meld together a, I guess you could call it a one world religion. That's really what it is. Rick Warren, oh, he's promoting this movie, heavy, Rick Warren. He's also promoting a uh, one world religion. Joel Osteen, you know, Mr. No Sin. Oh, maybe that's why they took Sin out of the movie. Because, you know, no mention of it. Dying, Christ dying for our sins. Yeah, they, they, they're bringing it all together. They're bringing it all into one big package. And they know what they're doing. They're not just, you know, oops, look what we did. You know, they know what they're doing. And don't be deceived. Eckhart Tolle, he's, he's a new age satanic liar. He says things like this in his book, A New Earth. Only the truth of who you are, if realized, will set you free. Ooh, really? 
Well, let's just compare that with, with what the Lord Jesus Christ taught in um, the Gospel of John, chapter 8. We'll start in verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus Christ is talking about knowing his word, knowing him, the truth. He is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Um, what did Mr. Toll say again? Only the truth of who you are, if realized, will set you free. It's funny, she was talking about being self-realized. That's what that means, you know, it's a new age lingo. It's funny because that's partially true what he said. Um, only the truth of who you are, if realized, will set you free. You do have to realize that you're a sinner before you can be saved. But that's totally not what he was talking about. No, nope. no, it's not. To such an extent that you can no longer feel your common humanity nor the rootedness in the one life that you share with each human being, your common divinity, all. So he shares the same views as Roma Downey and the USM staff there about being divine. Right. Rings a bell there. I think Genesis chapter 3, I think uh, Satan was saying that to Eve. You know, you can be as gods. Same lie from... The garden. Same exact lie. Another Eckhart Troll quote. You do not become good by trying to be good, but by finding the goodness that is already within you and allowing that goodness to emerge. Oh. Really? Okay, well, look in Romans uh, chapter 7, verse 18. For I know that in me... That is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Well, that's Romans 7.18. Mark 10.18. We could just uh, take a second to look at that. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. And of course, Jesus is actually inferring there that he is God. In other words, the only one that's good is God. And he was good. He was sinless. He was sinless. He was God in the flesh. And that's what the Bible teaches. So, Mr. Troll is wrong about that. Um, let's see. Well, that's enough of that. We can see here that Roma Downey is at least deceived, at worst, she's, she's advocating for these things in order to promote these new age ideas, okay? And that's why you're being warned about it. Now we'll move on to uh, Diago Morgado. This is the uh, actor that they've selected to portray the living God, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Son of God which is a blasphemous thing to do, covered in my other video. If you want to watch graven images forbidden by God, we're not supposed to make a representation of God, okay? And Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. He didn't come when there was a bunch of cameras and videos and internet, by the way. He came at the appointed time and there were conflicts back then, even in the early days after the Lord went back to heaven. Um, I heard a preacher mention about early writings, people asking for images, you know, wanting a picture of Jesus. No, why do you want a picture? No, you're not gonna, you're not gonna go against God's word and blaspheme Him by making a mockery like that. You're just not. Um, anyway, and this is a little bit of the reason why. God forbid that, how blasphemous and wrong it is. This guy, Diago Morgado, was called, they've been calling him Hot Jesus. 
I because of his looks, I guess. Okay. So you're you're fostering lust after a man that's playing in a movie pretending to be Jesus Christ, the Lord of all creation. That's not creepy or anything, you know. Certainly not sinful. Yeah. Uh, Morgado was born in Campo Grande, Lisbon, Portugal. He has a son, Santiago, born on September 2nd, 2009, with his partner, Katia Oliveira. Oh, so he's not even saved. Not that that would make it right, but he's a lost fornicator. And he's posed in basically pornographic pictures for GQ. And, you know, he was a model before he became an actor, of course, you know. Because he's so, you know, good looking. And then he was in soap operas. I guess they're Italian soap operas or, or I don't know, foreign soap operas. I don't know the language that they were speaking in the clips I saw, but... Um, Really promoting a good, godly image there, of course. He was asked about the hot Jesus, you know, hashtag. And he said, it is a compliment, obviously. But I don't want that to take away from what we tried to achieve. The best story is the story that gets to the most people. If the message of Jesus was love, hope, and compassion... And I can bring that to more people by being a more appealing Jesus? I am happy with that. <laughs> oh, wow. Think much of yourself, buddy? Um, first of all, if the message of Jesus... We know what the message of Jesus is. And he says was, but what his message is, okay... This applies to now, okay? If the message of Jesus was love, hope, and compassion... No, it's not it was love, hope, and compassion. The Lord's message is repent from your sins and be converted. Believe on the gospel and be saved. Repent from your sins. Oh, but I forgot. You left that out of your movie because you're the New Age Jesus. Just trying to change the world, as we'll see. The next stage that brings us to is changing and adding and subtracting from God's Word. This is... I don't know how to pick the, what's the most blasphemous part of this film, but that's, that's up there with it, you know. Um, let's just go through. I'm going to hit a few of these main points that are in this article. I'll put the link down there. Uh, first of all, Jesus asks Peter to go fishing. It says, when Jesus comes to the Sea of Galilee, rather than call his first four disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, he only calls one disciple, Peter. Wasn't well, that convenient for the Catholic agenda that they've got to promote there? Just change the Bible and suit your little agenda there. Rather than call Peter and Andrew from their boat while they were fishing, Jesus pleads, Peter, just give me an hour and I'll give you a whole new life. It sounds like a poor local TV commercial for a car salesman or something. Yeah. By the way, that's not in the Bible. Jesus didn't say that. No, he, he didn't say that. After sassing Jesus, being rude to him, Peter takes him fishing, where Jesus works a miracle and provides him with an abundance of fish. When Peter asks what they are going to do, Jesus says, Change the world. <laughs> this is not even a good script. This is not even, this is not even, a, if you're going to change it, wow. Wow. That is corny. Okay, Jesus didn't come to change the world, okay? The world hates Jesus. The world hated him when he was here, okay? They hate him now. 
He said, if the world hates you, don't be ashamed. Don't, don't be amazed. They hated me first. Okay? He came to change you and me. He came to save sinners. First Timothy 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Praise the Lord. Okay. In the real Bible, Jesus doesn't beg anyone to spend time with him. After all, he is the Lord and he has all authority to command who he wants and what he wants. Therefore, he commands Peter and Andrew to follow him and they immediately leave their boat and their nets and obey Jesus' command. That's what happened in the scriptures. Follow me. He didn't tell anyone that he came to change the world, nor did he ask for their help to do so. Um, Christ came into the world to save sinners from the righteous wrath of God, which is, which is the just penalty for our sins. He never said he came to change the world. He said he came to transform people by giving them new hearts and new minds through repentance and faith in Christ alone. Amen. Okay, what's another change they made? The 13 disciples can't make this up, you know? I mean, just just listen to this. This, Yes, you read that right. I know in scriptures there are only 12 apostles, all men. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas Iscariot. But in the film, there are 13 apostles, and the 13th apostle is a woman named Mary. Not only is she always with them, she's with them when they travel privately. Though in the scriptures, you know, those, those pesky little scriptures, the, the actual Bible, you know, in the scriptures, Jesus pulled aside and taught only the 12 men. And that's plainly recorded. Mary is also very outspoken and often and often resolves, no, I guess I need these. Mary is also very outspoken and often reproves the male apostles to have more faith, as it is very apparent her faith is stronger. Wow. Don't really remember that. Oh, because it's not there. During the crucifixion scene, when Jesus is being jeered at by the crowd, Mary defends Jesus and shouts, Leave him be! Wow, brave gal. Braver than the male apostles who never speak up or do anything heroic or faithful. Then when, Je then when Jesus is resurrected, she's the first and only woman to, em to enter the empty tomb. That's not how it's recorded in Scripture. Just saying. Minor, minor details. I mean, just God's word, you know. She also accompanies Peter and John, who later come to the empty tomb to see for themselves. In scripture, you know, the Bible, like we said. Three women go to the tomb early in the morning and are greeted by angels who remind them that Jesus said he would rise on the third day. In the movie, she and the disciples remember all this on their own. <laughs> I can't even keep track. How many changes is that? <laughs> Why? Why? Lazarus rises with more than a command. In this unbiblical portrayer, portrayal of the true Son of God, while the fake, while the fake Jesus and his disciples are walking through the crowd, Mary, the 13th disciple, just happens to see Martha weeping and ask her what's wrong. When Martha says that Lazarus had just died, this is all backwards and wrong. <laughs> ah. When Martha says that, Jesus, that Lazarus has died, Jesus is surprised.
First of all, Jesus stayed where he was on purpose. He waited till the fourth day to go where Lazarus was. And he knew that he was dead before he even started his journey to go there. He told his disciples, no, Lazarus is dead. And then they went back and they reached there on the fourth day after he was, was dead. And Jesus already knew that he was dead. He had told his disciples that when they were in another town and they didn't have Twitter. This is, this is blasphemy. It's ridiculous. This should really offend you if you're saved. This should really offend you. All of this. Every, every part of it. Um, and I hope you share these facts with other people that say they're going to go to the movie or watch the movie or they want the DVD or whatever, you know? Come on. Let's take these people to task for this. Goodness. Speak up for the Lord. Be bold. Jesus is surprised, which he often is throughout this film, <laughs> and asked to be taken to the tomb. Once Jesus arrives at the tomb, he actually goes in with Martha. Then he touches Lazarus, whose face is not wrapped, gently cradles his head, weeps, kisses the back of Lazarus's head, quotes some scripture, and gently suggests that Lazarus rise, and he does. That's like the total opposite of what actually happened. It's, it's actually bizarre. Like I, I actually couldn't figure out why they would make all these changes. I just, I don't get it. I, I guess I could research it some more and, and maybe I will be able to figure out the significance of some of these changes because there has to be a reason, but it's downright bizarre. I just I just don't believe that they're that ignorant of what the scripture it's it's plain it's plain language it's plainly taught the stories in the Bible the the truth the truth is here they're just rewriting it ignoring the scriptures and rewriting it it's really evil Martha and Lazarus embrace and the three of them emerge from the tomb as the crowd cheers <laughs> This scene was performed more like football players exiting a tunnel and onto their home field than the truly majestic and awesome scene that is depicted in scripture. Other thing that they left out was the Great Commission. Which, uh, when Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, he told his disciples, Matthew 28, Verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Diago Morgado didn't say that. Gospel, that is the good news of Jesus Christ, is essentially in John 3.16-21. through 21. This passage proclaims why Christ came into the world, to save sinners from the full penalty of our sins. Which is why the good news is the greatest news of any human being can receive. Okay? Not self-realization. For there is only one mediator between man and God Almighty, Christ the Lord, the only Son of God. Amen. However, in the movie, Jesus never mentions a just penalty of sin or that we need to be made into new cre creations through repentance and faith in Christ, which alone equips us to go forth into all the world and make disciples, not converts, to a new way, a better world, or just a happier and more peaceful life. It's very true. I just decided to read a lot of this. I just wanted to read this woman wrote this article and I thought it was pretty good. It helps to keep me from going off in too many, wasting too much time here. Because um, it's on point. It's, it's right. Um, anyway, uh, one final thought I just wanted to close with. I, I had to look this up because I thought this was uh, 
urban legend or something or a rumor, but I guess that in the soundtrack for the Son of God movie, um, you know, they have they have obviously they have a lot of uh, Christian rock. But they also have um, Mary, did you know? And it's being sung by this person, C. Lo Green. Um, and his I, I don't know I don't understand these people. Um you know, let's wake up, okay? We don't need to be entertained. We don't need entertainment to evangelize the lost world. We don't need to to use worldly methods to try and convert people. We have God's word, okay? And I suggest it's the King James Bible, okay? We have God's word. It hasn't been tampered with. It's in the English language. It's been preserved. And it's perfect, okay? This is what convicts people of their sins. The Holy Spirit inspired word of God. Uh, and this movie is blasphemous. It's just a warning, you know? I, I mean, I just plead with you, share it with people, expose it for what it is. And, um, you know, when they come out with the sequel or whatever they're going to keep doing, I mean, these people need to be exposed. They're not, they're not saved. They need, they need prayer. They're messing around with, they don't even understand what they're, what they're messing around with here. God's commanded in his word not to make graven images. He's commanded in his word not to take away from his word or add to his word. But even if you don't do those things, if you're lost, you're lost. You need the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to repent and trust in him alone. Not your works not self-realization, not, you know, all this other garbage and lies. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. The Lord Jesus Christ is the truth. The true Jesus Christ, the real Son of God, okay? And uh, he's only to be found here in the Holy Bible. He's not on the big screen. And he's certainly not having anything to do with uh, Diago Morgado. So please heed the warning and spread the news about this. I, I pray that um, God will get the glory from this information getting out. And I'll be praying for those who watch. Thanks.